Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a pattern called Tree Lot. Now this is a quilt pattern, but Cozy Quilt Designs also has a table runner pattern included in here. So we're just gonna make one row of the patchwork and make it into a table runner. We're gonna use a strip set. This is a batik strip set with metallic accents, and this should make up a beautiful table runner. So let's go over to the workroom and get started sewing. To make the table runner, we need some two and a half inch strips. We only have to use five strips, but we're gonna use a few more just so we have a nice variety of colors. So we're gonna be making one of these rows. The nice thing about Cozy Quilt Designs patterns is they give you a whole bunch of different sizes that you can make. I'm gonna use batiks. I have a beautiful group of batiks that have metallic gold accents. So most of these fabrics are from Robert Kaufman and you can see the beautiful snowflakes and ornaments here in metallic gold. So I'm gonna use all of the darker strips for the trees and then I've got an almost solid batik that I'm going to use for the background. Let's unroll this here, take a look at the fabrics. We have a beautiful variety of dark prints. So these can be used in the trees and we've got one really dark one here that would be great for the stems. So I'm gonna use that for all the stems. I'm gonna use all of these different dark prints in the trees. And then the light prints I'm gonna set aside. I have all of my dark strips subcut into the sizes the pattern calls for. Then I cut the backgrounds. Those are also two and a half inch strips cut to different lengths and the pattern tells you exactly what sizes you need. And the only other piece we need are, is this unit here, which we're gonna use for the tree trunks. The next step is to mark a diagonal line on the back of all of your light pieces. So for each size, I have half of them marked facing this way and half of them marked facing that way. So let me show you how I like to mark those. I have a ruler with a 45 degree line right there. So I am going to put that white line and I'm gonna line it up with the bottom of the piece. And I'm gonna put the corner of the ruler in the corner of the patchwork and then hold it down and draw with, I use Quilter's Choice, it's a chalk. It comes off real easy and it doesn't leave a real hard line. So we wanna do, for this piece, we're gonna to wanna to do half of them that way and half of them facing this way. So now you've gotta turn the ruler around and figure out how do I turn it? There we go. And sometimes you have to move it over just a little bit because your chalk pencil is a little bit wide. So you want that line to go right to the corner. So we're gonna mark half of these this way and half of these this way. Now we're ready to start building the tree. It's a really fun method. So we're gonna take the smallest printed piece and the biggest light pieces. And then we are going to stitch this right here. We're gonna line everything up. We're gonna stitch it and then that's gonna get folded like that. Then the other side is gonna get stitched and folded like that. And that's gonna be the very top of our tree. Then we're gonna move up to the second row where we've got a bigger piece of print and smaller light pieces, but we're gonna use the same method and we're gonna work our way down. So every row is made using the same method and it goes really, really fast. So let's take these over to the machine and see how they stitch up. I'm gonna go ahead and pin a couple of the rows before I start sewing. So I've got these all ready to go. So I'm just gonna pin them together so that they won't get mixed up. So I'm just gonna set that to the side for a little bit. I'm gonna line up these corners real carefully and I'm gonna stitch right on the line. And 
you can see when you open it up, everything is gonna line up. And I really think we're going to need to iron this and trim this off before we do the second side. So I'm just gonna repin that and I'm gonna go ahead and do the right side of each one of these. So here's our seam and we want to press this, we want to press everything towards the dark side. So we want all of that excess to be pressed toward the dark side. You want to make sure it's nice and straight there. So we're just going to, my instinct is to open it up like that, but we want it pressed that way. And you can still open it up and make sure it's nice and straight. Now we want to trim off this excess here. So I think it's easiest just with a pair of scissors. You can open it up and take it over to your cutting mat and use your blade if you want, but it doesn't even really matter if it's not straight because that's just seam allowance. The seam is already very straight. So I'm just gonna take each one of these and trim it with some scissors. Now we're ready to stitch on the other half of the background. So we're just going to use our drawn line again and stitch right there. Line up your corners so everything is meeting there. Right here you want those fabrics lined up exact. And then it's real easy to stitch on the line. Once those are all stitched, we're going to iron them the same way. We're gonna turn all of the excess fabric towards the dark side. Now we're gonna trim off the excess from the back side, just like we did on the first half. And you can see it's starting to look like a tree. All we have to do now is sew the rows together to make the tree. So just use a careful quarter inch seam. There's nothing to match. Just line up the edges. We are going to press this, all the seams, towards the top of the tree. And I'm going to finger press them a little bit. And then after the block is done, I'm going to steam press it. Now we'll stitch this one onto here. To press this, I just want to make sure that I keep it nice and straight and don't stretch anything. So I like to do it from the back first so I can make sure my seam allowances are laying the way I want them to. See how that one popped up a little? So I'm going to make sure that's down. Then we'll press this side. So a lot of times I'll just press it with a dry iron. Then I'll flip it over and make sure all the lines look really, really straight. And I can feel if the seam allowances are going the way they ought to. All right, the tree is done, but we still need to add the stem. So the stems can all be made in bulk. We're gonna make a strip unit that will do all the stems all at once. Here's the fabrics for the stem. So we're just gonna sew these three pieces together. Then we're going to cut this into two and a half inch widths, and then each one of those will make the stem portion for each tree. I'm gonna use a quarter inch seam, and anytime I'm gonna sew something and cut it afterwards, I'm gonna shorten my stitch length so that I have a lot of stitches, because when you cut something that's already stitched, you run the risk of the stitches coming out every place you slice. So you can see I've got a lot of stitches there. Then just don't stretch anything. Don't stretch the top, don't stretch the back. Just stitch with them very even and smooth. We're going to press this to the dark side. So I like to finger press it first. If you don't like to use your fingernail on this, you can use the back of a spoon it's just to keep it in place while we stitch the next piece on. Yeah. 
I'm also going to finger press this seam towards the dark fabric. So I'm just kind of pulling it open and then putting my fingernail, even if you don't use your fingernail, you can just use your fingertip along there. It just squashes it a little bit. And now this is gonna lay really flat with the seam allowances heading towards the middle and it's gonna make it really easy to iron. Here is how I like to cut a strip unit. I am gonna put this edge along one of the lines on my cutting mat. Then I'm gonna put my plastic ruler on top of the unit and I'm gonna line it up with one of the upright lines. I'm gonna use a weight up here to help keep that ruler in place as I cut. Now I'm just gonna make a nice straight line here. Now I'm gonna move over two and a half inches. So even if I lift this up, I can still count one, two and a half and that's where I wanna put my ruler. So when I put the ruler on the lines of the cutting board, I find that I always get really accurate cuts. So that's the stem unit that we're gonna put onto our block here. You can see where it's gonna go right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of them and we'll use those stems for the other blocks. This unit fits right on the bottom. No matching of seams. We're just gonna stitch it on iron it, and then make the rest of the blocks. Here's all four blocks that go in the table runner. The only other item we need is this plain strip that goes, basically it goes on the bottom of each block, so it ends up going between the blocks. So I'm gonna put one down here way at the bottom and that is what the pattern calls for. I think that I'm going to also add one up here because I think it just looks a little more balanced that way. I'm gonna sew them all together and then I'm gonna add a small border and a big border and then I'm going to quilt it all up and show you the finished runner. I had so much fun making the tree runner that I made another one. This is the one I showed you how to make all the blocks. And here's another one that I made using the same jelly roll, but I used colorful backgrounds instead of the plain backgrounds. I like them both. I changed up the borders a little bit. The pattern called for a two and a half inch and a five inch. I thought this looked nice with just one border. So I used a three inch border here. I used a scrolly holly berry quilting pattern and it shows up very nicely on here and the red binding just frames it really, really well. I used a green print on the back and I put both of these runners onto the quilting machine at the same time with one big piece of green backing. So it's got the same green on both of them. And that way I quilted that one, then I quilted this one and it went really fast. Now here I've got a little red border. I cut it one inch. And then again, I used a three inch border on the outside. Really quick, quick runner to make. And if you were going to be making a quilt instead of a runner, you can see you would just use multiple rows with a sashing in between. Since I cut the borders down a little, my runner's not quite as big as what the pattern calls for. Mine turned out about 58, both of them are about 58 inches long. A really fun Christmassy project. This would look great on your table. It would also look really nice if you hung it up on your door. I think I'm gonna hang this on the outside of my front door. Very, very festive. Thanks for watching our tutorial today and Merry Christmas.